honored by your presence this morning. The dedication of this building, its staff, and 10 and a half million members of the National Geographic Society throughout the world. It represents commitment. The first is to vigorous and continue the pursuit of our mission to increase. You can't be thanked enough for your great and good work. Good to see Gil Grosvenor again. The first time I met him, I gave him quite a start. It was just before I took office and we were having a reception at Blair House. Gil introduced himself and told me where he worked. And I informed him that he was responsible for one of the biggest problems that Nancy and I were having in the transition. And he looked at me a little wide-eyed and I told him, being in the middle of a big move from the west to the east, Gil, I have hundreds of National Geographics at the ranch, and I don't know how the heck I'm going to haul them all to the White House. <laughs> this new experiment called America. And it occurs to me that that little firmament is an appropriate symbol for this building. It reflects the outward reaching, no boundaries impulse that has shaped your society. It reflects the great respect that you have for specifics, for exactitude for recreating things as they were, dot for dot and star for star. And it reflects the spirit of inquiry that has directed your studies. All it knows, you still discover. You fund expeditions, you help researchers, you encourage impossible dreams. With our technology clicking away and bringing us from Plainfield, New Jersey to the Himalayas in less than a day of a man's life. But it sometimes seems that there are no juries any, journeys anymore. No more great treks. Remember how in the movies they made when we were young? Well, the movies they made when and they have arrows showing the journey as it progresses. Our hero started here, visited there, and now he's just landed in his destination, fading on hero. And there was a sense of a long journey unfolding. Well, that sense still exists in National Geographic. And somehow you take your readers along in the ride as you climb mountains and cut your way through jungles. There is another thing, the special sense of enough to give her beautiful things, delicate gold bracelets and jewels. A small observation, perhaps, but it carries a whole world of infants. It evokes. You bring history to life. And you remind us all that civilizations are born, and die, and are rediscovered in an endless continuum. I think it should be noted that the National Geographic I have to tell you, you are looking at a Western art buff. In fact, uh, long years before I ever could possess any at all, and, and when certain other forms of art, like abstract, were becoming very prominent, I kept saying to everyone, you watch one day, people are going to rediscover Remington. <laughs> Painters of that kind. And I said it for years and years, and never bought a single painting. <laughs> and I finally got around to that. I found that inflation had begun early in that particular <laughs> Say, did, did you get the picture of, uh, of what, of us and... I'm sorry, I'm going to read this out. Well, I think it's all right. Thank you, daughters. This is to certify that, this, that the President of the United States has awarded the Defense Superior Service Medal to Lieutenant Colonel William M. Drennan, Jr., United States Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel William M. Drennan, Jr., United States Air Force, distinguished himself by exceptionally superior service as the Air Force aide to the President of the United States from August 1981 through June 1984. Through this period, the leadership, foresight, and ceaseless efforts consistently demonstrated by Lieutenant Colonel Drennan contributed immeasurably to the effectiveness and success of the White House Military Office. In this highly visible assignment, he routinely performed complex 
and sensitive tasks with critical impact on presidential activities. He was responsible for planning and coordinating numerous events of national and international significance, requiring direct and constant liaison with senior officials from the United States and abroad. He established meaningful and lasting contributions to the Office of the President and the Department of Defense, earning total admiration and respect. The distinctive accomplishments of Lieutenant Colonel Drennan reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of Defense. jelly beans for you too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I know you were sitting close sometimes. Yes, we saw them yesterday. Yes. And they are very good. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Souvenir of this. Pete Mullis. Thanks. All right. Thank you. you bet. I see them. How about that? Oh. That's pretty. Very unusual. Well, sir, once again, it's been a pleasure. It's been well, a lifetime. Well, listen. We'll miss you. Where are you going? Down to San Antonio, sir. I'm going to pre advance your trip down there, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Thanks again, sir. Let's get back to your schedule. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye, Mr. President. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take an answer now. We'll try to quit and talk about some things. Do you agree with him that the continent needs another Irishman? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. 